every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to an area and you multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed. And the only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. The human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You are a plague. And the coronavirus is the cure. Just kidding. But honestly, when you look at human society and our economy and what is done to our planetary ecosystems, we're certainly functioning like a virus. In the past 50 years alone, humanity has wiped out 60% of animal populations and degraded the entire global biosphere. And no, it's not human nature to destroy the planet and ourselves. The problem lies in our outdated and inefficient economic system, which is about blind consumerism. Just for starters, infinite growth on a finite planet is the ideology of the cancer cell. And as long as capitalism remains, we can expect not only more crises like this, but also incompetency by our system to respond in any appropriate manner. It should be clear to any critical-minded person that GDP growth does not equal human well-being or environmental preservation. The more we consume and use things up faster and faster and faster, the better our lives are supposed to be, right? That sounds like some stupid shit right there. The virus has caused a huge drop of industrial activity as factories are shutting down and our so-called economic activity comes to a halt. As a result, China's polluted industrial cities are having blue skies for the first time. And you know, the irony in all of this is actually quite amazing. How a virus is what slows down a global economy that's destroying our planetary ecosystem. And when this needless economic activity goes down, so does air pollution. The coronavirus marks the most iconic attack on the social system and economy. The social and political institutions that are meant to protect and serve the interests of the people have shown themselves to be more self-serving and incompetent than ever before. Hospital workers do not have protective equipment. We don't have the necessary ventilators. And, but we have to go into this vote, eyes wide open. What did the Senate majority fight for? One of the largest corporate bailouts with as few strings as possible in American history. Shameful. Governments can now print out all the money they need and hand it to those who are least qualified to manage and operate society. And even though the slowdown of the economy has proven highly beneficial for nature's capacity to regenerate, the economy can only function in a way that is destructive to all life processes. We live in a world where the light at the end of the proverbial tunnel is being constantly snuffed out, where merely existing under capitalism means having to endure a never-ending series of social, economic, and ecological catastrophes. And as this crisis continues and the global economy faces a potential depression, the paramount question of our time should be, how much longer can humanity survive this system before we are pushed to the limit, to the point of no return? And so let's look at COVID-19. It's a virus that spread from a bat to a human host. But the real cause of the spread of the virus itself can be traced back to our highly inefficient and outdated production methods. Mass animal farming, aka factory farming, has caused us to enroach into wild habitats where a chance of exposure to disease is very high. And South China is notorious for these practices. But the truth is, these are all old and hideously inefficient systems that could be updated to present day technology so we can end our war on nature once and for all. Please forgive humanity. I know, I'm sorry. We've, we've damaged you so much. Here you go. Just don't bite my finger. COVID-19 has caused a huge downturn of the economy as millions of people are put out of work and major industries face huge losses and even bankruptcy. So as the market slows down and people lose their jobs, consumer demand drops as well. Which is really interesting if you think about it. And what Peter Joseph, the founder of the Zeitgeist Movement, calls the market paradox, capitalism justifies itself through the recognition of scarcity, but on the other side, it goes and supports and rewards infinite consumption. But if only we could switch over to a steady state system that's not about infinite growth, where we use renewable energy to meet human needs instead of creating artificial demand. Yo, yo, chill dog, these people are not ready for that. Look, these people want action, they want money, they want fame. 
Yo, they want cool shit, okay? They want cool shit. Other industries that took a hit and need rescue include the casino industry, tourism industry, and airline industry to the tune of trillions of dollars. Despite making over two billion in profits in 2018, American Airlines blew most of its money on a stock buyback spree to get even more money for themselves and to retrofit their planes to fit in more seats. You know, to cram you in even further. And they kept borrowing and borrowing until they had accumulated a debt of $30 billion, nearly five times the company's value. So judging by our Iron Randy and every man for himself meritocracy based system, they clearly made a stupid decision and should be led to fail. The average person goes through real shit, real complications on a daily basis and so they need to be bailed out. When 50% of Americans in the richest country in the history of our planet cannot afford a $500 emergency charge, why should we be bailing out the oil industry? And what about the idea of work? Millions of people have lost their jobs. Something that's completely out of their control. It's not their fault. We should look at this actually as an opportunity to discuss an entirely new way of life. Our economic system, this gigantic monster that consumes everything in sight, has slowed down and the environmental impact has been immediate. The economy might be down, but food production and manufacturing are doing fine. And that's because of technology. Most of these processes are already automated. And that's the point. The goal of any economy should be to meet human needs and to do it efficiently. Especially in a crisis where human contact is to be minimized, automation can take care of our needs as it is already doing. As long as our food production and manufacturing are stable, why do we have to have an overarching infinite consumption system? Our current state of science and technology are the true wealth of our society. However, in our current economy, we just keep fumbling around with this fictional concept of money, printing out trillions and trillions of dollars, create all this needless complexity that makes no goddamn sense. Why should we keep forcing people to waste their lives away in boring, labor-intensive, repetitive work? Our technology allows us to do away with repetitive, dangerous jobs, as well as the notion of haves and have-nots. And actually, among the incompetence of our political and economic leaders, the only thing that has actually been able to maintain society afloat has been our technology. It is our medicine, our hospitals, or in this case, the automated self-test kits that can deliver nearly 400 tests in eight hours. It seems the only thing that the virus has actually impacted is our consumers' lifestyles and anti-economic activities. And like I said, what this crisis actually really shows is how antiquated capitalism really is. It's unable to adapt to sudden change. Given our 21st century technology, nobody should have to earn the right to live. And society should not be ecocidal and constantly striving to run off of a cliff. This is why it's critical for us to get away from market practices to an actual scientific approach to planetary management and the streamlining of production, distribution, and recycling. Now, the last point I'd like to make is about the idea of financial privatization as it pertains to this crisis. Privatization and hence the deregulation of major industries reached its peak during the 1970s in the Reagan and Thatcher era. In the US political system, even the mere hints of social benefits have been demonized for decades by the neoliberal establishment. The logic was that everything should be done through private institutions and through market practices. You know, such as the idea of putting our health in the hands of private healthcare institutions. A for-profit healthcare system has no interest in public health. Have you noticed how private healthcare providers resemble rats that are jumping off of a sinking ship? Have we heard of anything being discussed in terms of contributions from private hospitals and private healthcare providers during this crisis? Private healthcare systems are not only inefficient, they are truly destructive. Every dollar, every yen, every euro being spent on private health services detracts from the capacity of humanity to deal with pandemics and it's about time we eradicate private health services. There's no longer any argument for their existence, even by the standards of liberal economic, pro-capitalist, pro-market thinking. Not a single new antibiotic treatment has been created in the last 35 years by big pharmaceutical corporations, you know, big pharma. 35 years. The market is not innovating when it comes to healthcare or even sustainability related matters. After a golden age of innovation in healthcare from the 1930s to 70s, where there were more anti-market policies and the state played a vital role in the economy. During the 1980s, where there was a pursuit of privatization, global investments for antibiotic research plummeted since dealing with infections were simply not profitable. To market fanatics, drugs that are hugely important 
should not be made unless a big profit can be made off of them. So there it is. As I always say, our economic system is a cancer, a virus that needs to be dealt with. And no time has it become more clear than now. Now is the time to talk about universal guaranteed income as a basic minimum requirement for all societies. And that private healthcare providers, private healthcare institutions are far, far inferior to public healthcare institutions because public healthcare systems are actually accountable to the people. The falseness of our labor for income system has been exposed and the free market is, as always, the greatest threat to global stability. And if you feel lost during this time because you're not working your nine hour shift job anymore, you know, working that job which is repetitive, boring, labor intensive, requires literally no creative thinking and in a top down corporate structure, if you're no longer working that anymore, and you feel lost because of it, because it's become your routine, then some serious inter-reflection needs to be done here. I don't know about you, man, but there's gotta be more to life than just slaving away for a living, you know, and just being a consumer. The wage slave paradigm is over, guys. It's over. It's time for humankind to pursue the higher things in life. A lot has changed in the past 300 years. People are no longer obsessed with the accumulation of things. We have eliminated hunger, want, the need for possessions. We've grown out of our infancy. Then what will happen to us? There's no trace of my money. My office is gone. What will I do? How will I live? This is the 24th century. Material needs no longer exist. Then what's the challenge? The challenge, Mr. Offenhaus, is to improve yourself. To enrich yourself. Enjoy it.